This plane had a collision with what? American Airlines Flight 157 Operator American Airlines, it was a date of 12th November 1995. The time was 0055 EST. According to type, McDonnell Douglas MD-83. Number of registration, N566AA. Fatalities, 0 of 5 crew, 0 of 78 passengers. Aircraft fate, substantially damaged. Repaired. Airport places, departure, Chicago O'Hare International Airport, ILORD KRD. United States, destination, Windsor Locks Bradley International Airport, CDBDL, KBDL, United States. What actually caused Flight 157 to collide? How it really happened, and most importantly, how it feels like being there? Let's find out. Hello everyone, welcome to Mayday Investigation, your aviation-friendly channel where we walk you through the high-profile air disasters to uncover how and why they happened. So subscribe now to climb into the cockpit and press the bell icon for an experience you won't soon forget. With that being said, let's take off. When it collided with trees in East Granby, Connecticut, while on arrival on runway 15 at Bradley International Airport, BDL, Windsor Locks, Connecticut, it was severely damaged. As it arrived short of the runway on grassy, flat terrain, the plane collided with an integrated navigation system antenna. Flight 1572 was a scheduled passenger flight operating under Title 14 Code of Federal Regulations, Part 121. The plane's airspeed began to drop and it began a gradual descent. When the rain stopped, the first officer was able to see the runway. The right engine was also not maintaining full thrust, according to the captain, who shouted at 0056, tell him we're going down. The first officer did what he was told. You're going to make it, the first officer stated to the captain, before asking if he wanted the landing gear down. The landing gear for the down position was then selected by the first officer. According to the captain, he then ordered the flaps to be dropped to 40 degrees in order to attain a balloon effect. In order to approach the runway, the jet touched the trunk of a big tree at the end of a runway, collided with and destroyed the majority of the ILS antenna array at the end of the runway, 33 safety overrun area, and landed on the slipway's edge. The plane tumbled down the slipway and down landing 15, stopping just past the intersection of runway 6 and 24 near the tower. Just take an overview for analyzing the circumstances and factors behind this incident. The inability of the flight crew to preserve the required descent altitude until the essential visual references associated with the runway was in sight was to be ruled to be the probable cause of the accident by the National Transportation Safety Board. The inability of the BDL approach, controller to provide the airline staff with a current altimeter setting, as well as the flight crew's failure to request a more current setting, were also contributing reasons. In summary, the flight crew permitted the airplane to fall around 309 feet below the stated MDA for the instrument approach. Despite the incorrect altimeter setting that influenced the indicated altitude, the captain didn't notice the dip below MDA at first, and when the first officer notified him of the altitude deviation, he didn't react quickly enough. The inability of the flight crew to sustain the appropriate MDA until the needed reference points associated with the airfield were in sight, according to the safety board, was a direct cause of the accident. The flight crew possessed all of the necessary FAA airmen certificates, and they were certified in accordance with company and regulatory criteria. They had adequate crew rest prior to the incident flight and did not show up to be under any extraordinary psychological strain. The plane was adequately fueled and passengers and cargo were loaded according to AAL, gravity and balance specifications. AAL dispatch procedures were followed when the flight was released. The atmosphere at BDL was well above statutory minimums for a landing. The overcast skies, moderate rain limiting visibility and strong gusty winds. There was no evidence that the pilot's static system, autopilot, ground presence warning system, air shear alert system or any other flight control system malfunctioned, which may have contributed to the disaster. AAL forecasts, as noted in the SIGMEC, were essentially right for the operation of Flight 1572. SIGMECs, AALs, FAA-approved technique for providing more concentrated predictions to flight crews, it's a legitimate method of weather dissemination. Because the flight data recorder's altitude vestige didn't require a height spike that would have resulted from a specific atmospheric pressure change, the force drop of around 1 millibar shown by the National Center for Atmospheric Research simulation for the place and time of the accident was not underestimated by a factor of 2 or 3. The flight crew had enough information about the weather at BDL as they commenced their approach to the airport, excluding a current altimeter setting. The flight crew should really have asked for a precise altimeter position from the BDL approach controller if one was not provided. 
as mandated, upon initial radio contact, because they knew the air pressure was rapidly lowering. If the flight attendant had acquired valid altimeter settings from the BDL approach controllers when the flight first notified the approaching controller at 0043, the plane would have been 40 feet higher than it was before hitting the woods, giving the plane adequate space to avoid hitting the trees. The airplane's QFE altimeter was displaying a height above airport elevation that was roughly 76 feet too high at the time of the accident, based on the altimeter setting obtained at 0030 resulting in the airplane being 76 feet lower than shown on the primary altimeters. Although the flight crew did not use the most recent QNH setting in the standby altimeter, 29.40 inches of HG, this error had no impact on the accident's sequence because flight staff had the completely right and yet outdated QFE setting 29.23 inches HG in the altimeters those who were using at the time of the accident. The first officer would have been better able to observe and instantly call the captain's focus to the height deviation below the MDA if he had tracked the landing on sensors until hitting the minimum descent altitude MDA, and postponed his investigation of the airport until after reaching MDA. The flight crew's exceptional resource management and flight abilities were completely liable for restricting the number of wounded passengers to one, as evidenced by the CVR recording followed by their collision with the trees. For precisely resolving the altitude of the trees on the ridgeline, FAA quality control was insufficient. If avionics aboard the plane can securely support such a process, flying non-precision landings with a steady rate or angles of descent until the airport area can be visually obtained has a lot of utility. When planning and altering the approaches to runway 15, the FAA should have just considered the question of precipitous topography, but did not. The complete ridge range on the critical approach part to BDL's runway 15 is an obstacle, and it, as well as similar topography near comparable airports, should be portrayed in detail on the applicable approach charts, given that the weather observer described the pressure changes as pressure falling rapidly. And in light of the controller's refusal to deliver the current altimeter setting, 29.38 inches HG, on initial radio contact, as well as the HS004434 entry of 29.34 inches HG. While the disaster aircraft was already on its frequency, the approach controller should have released the altimeter setting modifications in the ARTS system as the plane approached the airport. The decision to close the tower was a prudent administrative decision because the severe wind and rain put people's safety in jeopardy. The flight crew benefited from the TRACON supervisor's interactions with them. He acted professionally and deserves praise for his commitment to support the flight despite the circumstances. The ATIS broadcasts should have been adjusted to reflect a temporarily closed tower in accordance with the tower closure routine, and flight crews should have been directed to another source for local climate and airport information. Despite the absence of MI safety limits, altitude warning, MSAW, presence throughout the approach, the MSAW functioned effectively, and it is not practical to give full MSAW coverage due to topographical limits in the BDL local region. Even if it took using the police of the airport to ask the contract weather monitor to contact the tower with more recent weather information, the tower controller, who was relieved, should have informed the releasing commander that the ATIS required to be updated. Although the fluctuating wind speeds at the time of the crash may have created localized air currents and wind shear in the vicinity, the DFDR data shows that no big updrafts or downdrafts touched the accident aircraft. In the expected average wind profile data, the lowering headwind shear was not significant. The weather was not bad enough to get to the collision to cause the plane to diverge below the MDA, because wind direction can have a direct influence on the system's wind shear detection capacity. Three to six months after anomalies are discovered in an unacceptable period of time to verify the correctness of the low-level wind shear alert system LLWAS, sensor alignment. The accident was not caused by a misaligned LLWAS wind sensor, Pilots of MD-80 and DC-9 class airplanes may be on emergency evacuation slides due to confusing instructions in the Douglas checklist. The maintenance manuals for the MD-80 and DC-9 are possibly confusing because the same part is referred by two distinct words, thing lanyard and inflation cable. So did the story give you chills? What did you think about this incident? Share your thoughts in the comments. That wraps up our video for today. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon to never miss breathtaking aviation stories. See you soon. Until then.